Hi, my name is Sarah Cheney, and this is my report on toxoplasmosis. Toxoplasmosis, or Toxoplasmosis gondii, is a single-celled protozoan parasite that infects warm-blooded animals. Toxoplasmosis is one of the five neglected parasite infections, or NPIs, in the United States. NPIs are diseases that are targeted by the CDC as priorities for public health awareness. In addition to toxoplasmosis, the other NPIs are Chagas disease, cystochercosis, toxocariosis, and trichomoniasis. Toxoplasmosis was first discovered in 1908 in rodents. The species Gandhi is named after the rodent in which it was discovered. The first recorded fatal case of toxoplasmosis was in 1932. However, toxoplasmosis was not officially classified as an agent of human infectious disease until 1939, and this is thanks to studies by Wolf, Cowan, and Page. Toxoplasmosis has also been classified as a Category B priority pathogen by the National Institutes of Health. Toxoplasmosis undergoes both a sexual and asexual reproduction cycle, um, and there are three main forms, oocytes, tachozoites, and bradyozoites, which can also be known as tissue cysts. Cats are the definitive hosts, so the cat will shed oocytes in its feces, and that's typically how other animals become infected. Humans and other animals, which mainly include mammals and some birds, are intermediate hosts, and they will typically only contract tachyzoites and bradyozoites, and you won't see oocytes in those hosts. Um, the fecal oocytes will come from the cat, and then they can either directly infect humans, or they can infect an animal, which then indirectly will infect a human. These are the three stages of toxoplasmosis. As you can see, we have the oocytes, which are where the uh, original infection comes from from cats. You have the bradyozoites, which is a tissue cyst in a muscle tissue, and tachyozoites, which are rapidly dividing cells that are the initial stage of infection in humans. Uh, there are two main courses of infection. It's either zoonotic, where a human gets it directly from an animal source. So this can be through ingesting bradyozoites, which are typically from undercooked meat, and accidental ingestion of oocytes from cat feces. So you can get this from a litter box, or if you're working in a garden that has feral cats excreting their feces in it, you can get it from that, and you can also get it from contaminated drinking water. The second course of infection is congenital, where a mother who's infected passes it to her unborn child through her bloodstream. The symptoms of toxoplasmosis are similar to flu-like symptoms, if you have any symptoms at all. Most healthy humans are asymptomatic, meaning they don't show any symptoms because their immune systems are able to suppress the pathogen. Um, in immunocompromised individuals, such as those with AIDS or HIV, those undergoing chemotherapy treatment, and those who have recently received an organ transplant, uh, those individuals can develop severe symptoms, including high fevers, loss of coordination, headaches, seizures, and even an ocular disease where there are lesions on the eye. Uh, immunocompromised patients who are infected before they became immunocompromised typically have less severe symptoms because when they become immunocompromised, it's simply a reactivation of the pathogen rather than an initial infection of the pathogen. In infants who have been infected through congenital process, the infection can cause a miscarriage or a stillborn child. Uh, if the child survives birth, then they typically will have an abnormal head size if they show symptoms at birth, and they can also contract jaundice from this disease. Uh, in a lot of cases, the child won't show any signs of infection until later in life when their development is impeded by the infection, and this can lead to vision loss, mental disability, seizures, and deafness, as well as other symptoms. Toxoplasmosis is typically diagnosed through serologic testing. Uh, they'll take a blood sample or a sample of another bodily fluid and test for your IgG levels which indicate an infection, 
and your IgM levels and avidity tests can estimate the particular time of infection. This is particularly important for pregnant women because whether or not they risk passing the pathogen onto their child depends on whether they contracted the disease before or after they became pregnant. Ocular disease can also be diagnosed through the presence of eye lesions, but they typically will run a serological testing as well to confirm that diagnosis. Uh, this can also be diagnosed through direct observation of stained tissue samples where you can look for bradyozoids, uh, as well as through various other fluids. So you can check your cerebrospinal fluid, um, and then you can also find live parasites in blood or other bodily fluids. And in the case of congenital infection, you can typically molecularly analyze amniotic fluid, and that will show DNA from the toxoplasmosis parasite if there is a risk of congenital infection. Most healthy individuals don't need to be treated for this disease. The symptoms are very mild if they have them at all and the immune system is fairly competent at suppressing them without the help of drugs. Uh, immunocompromised individuals are typically given a series of antibiotics where they mix together pyrimethiame and sulfadiazine which work together to both eliminate symptoms and eliminate the parasite. Pregnant individuals are usually given spiromycine instead of the previously mentioned combination of drugs, as this specifically will target the uterus, and so it will prevent the infection from transmitting to the child, and the combination of the other two drugs often will cause complications for the pregnancy, so they try to avoid using that. If an infant has the disease, they are also will be given the combination drug, um, and many doctors will recommend a folic acid supplement in addition to these drugs because pyrimethamine will reduce your ability to absorb folic acid. Uh, outbreaks of toxoplasmosis are fairly rare, and when they do happen, they're usually on the smaller side. Uh, most of the ones that I found had fewer than 100 cases, and a lot of them had less than 50. Uh, the largest was in Canada in 1995, and an estimated 3,000 to 7,000 cases were reported in British Columbia, and it was caused by a contaminated water supply. And most of the outbreaks that I found were actually among animal populations and not human populations. The CDC thinks that there are more than 60 million people infected in the United States. And a study I found showed that approximately 0.35% of the population will become newly infected every year. Only about 2% of infected people will develop an ocular disease as a result. And for some reason, Brazil appears to have a higher infection rate than in any other location. The easiest way to prevent toxoplasmosis is through common sense. Don't eat undercooked meat. Make sure you're washing your fruits and vegetables. Wash your hands after you're handling cats or cat feces. And if you're pregnant, it would be wise to avoid all type of interaction with cats. Um, currently, there are no effective vaccines against this, although there are several that are in the early stages of development.